All right, I'm going to do a video here. Uh, uh, somebody just asked the question, what is the difference between DevOps and cloud native, which is another term. I, I'm on the beach today. I'm just, I'm not even caring about what it looks like, so forgive me. But I want to answer this question really quickly because I was really confused about this too. And I could probably have some big fancy graphic right here. Instead, I have just a sunset for you to look at. <laughs> and we'll talk about this really quickly. So the short answer is um, that cloud native encapsulates. Let me let me send you to a site that's really great. If you if you open up a site, uh, this will help you understand it. So if you go HTS, uh, I think it's, what's it called? Um, is it roadmap? I see the roadmap or landscape. What is it? Is it is it landscape? I think it might be landscape landscape.cn cloud native uh cf.org i don't even remember this is how you know i'm doing like authentic videos because i have no idea where i'm going <laughs> it's a cloud native where is it uh cn cloud native foundation there it is there it is yay all right, so roadmap.sh is another one. Uh, no, that's a different one, I think. So I'm sorry, apologize for the white here. That that's them. So so this is cloud native. And if you really want a definition of cloud native, you can go to the cloud native foundation, uh, the which is under the Linux Foundation, by the way, which I found out. Which is, I love that. That means Linux is bigger than cloud. Believe it or not. I mean, this is crazy. Somebody that grew up in the night or you know lived through the nineties of Linux when it first came up to know that Linux is now so big that all of cloud is included under Linux. It just blows my mind to this day. So that's how big cloud is. So and it's not cloud. So I should probably put that in the video. What's the difference between cloud and cloud native and DevOps? What are all these terms about? And God knows I'm obsessed with terminology. That's just the way I am. Well, let's try this. Okay, so cloud to me means primarily cloud services like Amazon. So Amazon was really the first AWS, you know, was really the, really the first cloud provider to get credit for the term cloud. It was, you know, really, and then of course, Azure and uh, Google uh, Compute Platform and Google Cloud, which are sort of different. Um, by the way, Stay, pay attention to to Google Cloud Platform and to Google Compute Engine. They are, there's some really interesting things coming out this year. It's 2020. There's some really interesting things coming up that I can't talk about, but that are coming out. Um, and that are going to give Amazon a reference. So that's cloud. So cloud, cloud has come to mean the outside cloud, you know, like the external cloud, the we are getting our server, buying our services, you know, something as a service because the service is in the cloud, right? Anytime you have as a service, it almost always means there's a cloud involved. There's some something out there that's just giving us what we need. And so that's usually, usually synonymous with Amazon, Azure, or Google. Uh, but there's lots of other cloud, or IBM, OpenShift and all that too. We've got to mention them. But so that's cloud. And then, so cloud native, uh, to me has come to mean all of that technology itself, the technology used to do those things, as well as other technologies that are independent of those services. So it's even bigger. So cloud native is bigger than just any one service provider. And that's why they have to have a thing like landscape like this, right? So you have databases that are, that are here, and if there's one thing, if there's one word that is synonymous with cloud native today, thank God in 2021, on April 10th, 2021, that you can say Kubernetes is the clear winner over orchestration of containers. And so Kubernetes has become 100%, in my mind, synonymous with cloud native. There's, there's another thing that's come synonymous with cloud native, and that's almost always Docker or container D for the really pedantic people out there. So just so everybody knows Docker became the standard adopted for all of cloud and got a new name called container D. And even though Docker people, people panic all the time and say, Oh, Docker's going, no, it's not. Docker was always there. It's just got a different name. And now it's, you know, the Docker company itself is using container D. It's all this open container initiative stuff, OCI stuff. So, don't get too caught up in that. All you really want to know is what's the difference. And then DevOps comes in, right? So, well, where is DevOps? 
So DevOps very specifically means the integration cycle, and you can watch Nana on YouTube talk about this. Uh, the DevOps, uh, let's go look. At, so DevOps is very, very specific. Uh, there are a number of things that use the cloud, but this is just one tiny piece of cloud and cloud native. It uses the cloud, primarily Git, GitOps, they call it, uh, but it doesn't necessarily depend on the cloud. And it's not it's not cloud native by any means. So if you were to draw a picture of DevOps and the cloud and cloud native, you'd have cloud native would be this big old picture, right? And then you'd have you'd have cloud be a big piece of the cloud native, and then you would have DevOps be a smaller piece down in the corner. And that's like, well, what's else? What else is in this big old thing here, right? There's tons of other stuff in there. And one of the things is the thing I do every day now to maintain my new full-time job. I am now employed to be a, a cloud native engineer slash infrastructure engineer for a high-performance computing machine learning uh, Kubernetes cluster. Okay. And that that is Kubernetes. And that is a massive platform as over, you know, there's lots of nodes. I won't say how many, but it has lots and lots of nodes. And it has nothing to do with DevOps. The scale of this operation to do the machine learning uh, from a team of like 200 plus machine learning people that are crunching crunching numbers on, on, on they have jobs that are running on 857 cores at a time that run over five days. None of that has anything to do with DevOps. So saying cloud native is the same as DevOps is totally wrong. DevOps is one piece of what can be done. The process of DevOps can be, the methodology of DevOps can be done in the cloud. It must be done in the cloud, but it is one tiny piece compared to this piece or other pieces. There's lots of others. So edge computing, edge computing, just in a nutshell, what edge is, is so say you have a target or something, and this, there's many examples of this, and I'm looking at Edge for Education myself, which I think is really interesting. But so Edge, Edge just means uh, putting containers at, on the endpoints of like so instead of typing into a uh, you know your point of sale when you type in stuff, having instead of having it phone home all the way up to the mothership and and uh, over a modem. Uh, or something and have the modem line go down and nobody can buy anything instead of that having you know a cloud on site and that's called the edge on the edge and then that cloud answers all the questions and takes care of it's like oh, a little inner it's like basically taking what used to be just considered amazon cloud or something like that reproducing that whole thing and putting it on prem which you then put on prem means okay that cloud that usually kubernetes cloud is running on a computer at that particular target store and then it deals with all of the internal infrastructure and and there's no problem because it's all about the local wi-fi wi stuff and so that stuff talks and talks and talks and it gets all done and then and then when there when there is a when it needs to phone home to the mothership there's a process for that but nothing gets taken out that's edge computing the reason i described edge computing really quickly to you is because edge computing is a massive piece of cloud native that has nothing to do with DevOps. So so imagine DevOps being one piece of this much, much, much larger cloud, you know, we're going to, you know, grouping. So the greatest size of scale of the grouping is cloud native. There's cloud, which has come to mean uh, Amazon, Azure, and Google mostly. That means, you know, traditional cloud services that inspired all of this, basically. And then you have DevOps down here in a corner. You have things like high-performance computing over Kubernetes, which is another corner. You have edge computing, which is a piece. And you have all of the other pieces that make up cloud natives. You have, you have, people, you have people deploying Kubernetes clusters that run robots with all the little sensors are all their own little containers. So all of that is cloud native computing. It's all cloud native. Uh, the, the cloud native is encapsulates all of the technologies that are involved with containerization of work and jobs and nodes, uh, the deployment there, you know, the deployment of computer of computing resources as nodes. So a computer isn't a computer anymore. A computer is a node. That means as far as, and this is why it was called Borg, by the way, at Google, 
So before Kubernetes became a thing publicly, internally at Google, it's called Borg because all the computers just became drones. They, we don't care about them. We care about we're going to reuse them for their CPU, their, sometimes their storage, but usually not, uh, and use them for their CPU and their memory mostly. And, and we're going to put all of those resources into the collective called... Uh, called you know the collective is is all of these nodes combined and kubernetes is the borg you know that that orchestrates everything and and says okay i need five computers this computer has has 16 resource cpus i can use i'm going to run the job over there and it does this thing and almost an, an artificial intelligence sort of way not particularly but that's how it runs everything so so when you talk about cloud native it's really important that you understand that it's really big and Almost always, when someone says cloud native, they the the next thing that they're going to say is, is that they they work with Kubernetes and they work with Docker files and containers all the time, and 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 all the core technologies that go with that, which include I've come to find out the most important technology so far. I've been doing this relatively recently. So far, the most important technologies to understand are obviously Docker. Not Docker Compose, it's not as important, but Docker Files is mandatory learning. Docker is mandatory learning, period. And then learning Kubernetes, if you want to get into the infrastructure, to the cloud native kind of engineering, Kubernetes is the most important thing to learn. And Helm is the most important of the ways of getting stuff around in Kubernetes. There's a number of other technologies related to this, like monitoring. Uh, and, and I'm just going to let you look through them. Uh, there's your edge stuff. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Har Harbor is the big one we're looking at. Now there's there's registries. So you have to have, instead of using everybody using Docker Hub to put their containers, there's like registry offerings and Harbor is the leader right now. Harbor and Quay, we've been evaluating those two actually. Uh, looks like looks like I want to go with Harbor personally. Kraken and Protus. Protus is dead pretty much. Anyway, so, so, so Kubernetes has won the game pretty much. Kubernetes, I, I'm going to personally say that Kubernetes and Helm and Docker have won the game. There's no reason to learn any of the other stuff in that, in that space. These other spaces, though, are still up for grabs. So, like, you know, the container runtime, so you have Docker, Creo, and all that. Uh, this space for container registries is still up for grabs. There's a lot of this is up for grabs. But at least now you'll know what the terms mean when you go into this. It's really, really daunting. And even for a, a hardened veteran like myself uh, to, to do it, uh, what is Kubernetes? In a nutshell, Kubernetes is slash proc for the cloud. And if, that, if you know Linux, that will help you understand what it is. It's a bunch of objects that communicate over REST that do lots of different things. Um, and that's it. So hopefully that'll help you get some, some sense of it. Uh, I'll talk about other things later, but uh, if you want to get into this, as I said, the first thing you need to do is install Docker. I did videos on this. You need to install Docker. You need to Docker pull Ubuntu. You need to learn the bash command line. You need to learn how to operate from the command line and terminal. You need to learn how to do POSIX shell scripts. POSIX shell scripts, very important. POSIX shell scripts. Uh, at, at some point, if you want to take it beyond that, you know, Python is the language for all of this right now, even though I hate it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and if you want to get into the infrastructure applications development space, that's all go. Now, there's a lot of room for lots of different languages in container in the containerized world of cloud native because each container can run whatever language you want to put in there, and it doesn't really matter. Microservices gave us that because that meant we don't really care as long as it's in a container and it's talking over a port. We don't we don't care what what's running it on the back end, and so languages are less important. But in the container world, size matters again, thank God. And so the smallest size containers that you can create the the more your infrastructure is fast and uh because one of these containers might be spun off it might have a hundred different ones spun off you don't want to have a, a hundred different uh python inter, you know versions right now that's not completely true because it does reuse and share resources sometimes but the bottom line is what language should you learn so and and that's a different video i'll talk about that a lot but before i end this video I'll say uh if you want to get into the devops thing so once again, DevOps, let me talk about DevOps just a bit. I didn't talk about it very much. So DevOps is how you write software. So DevOps is very, very closely associated with applications development, continuous integration, and continuous deployment. That means DevOps is there to get your software out. 
I mean, to get it to release it. And that DevOps cycle could be to release your software to the public through an AWS cloud. It could be to release your software internally. And there are a lot of DevOps operations and platforms. GitLab made a, a big name for themselves by making all of these steps combined into a single platform, kind of monolithic style. And the industry is still trying to decide whether that's a good thing or not. Uh, I, I kind of haven't decided myself, but I... I feel like more of the industry is going with GitHub because they can plug in their own modular pieces instead of saying, hey, I have to use GitLab for all this. You know, the one-stop shopping idea seems like a good thing at the first, but 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 businesses are like, well, I want to plug in Jenkins here, which sucks, but I want to plug in this here, this here, this here. And so that that's what that's what get them. GitHub Act yeah, GitHub Actions really, really caught GitHub up with GitLab. So what what is the purpose of DevOps? The purpose of DevOps is for you to write software and get it published fast and high quality, so that it's being it's being tested continuously. It's getting continuous feedback. It's getting committed through Git. Git is a foundational element of DevOps. Is GitOps? You know, it's it's the triggering of issues. It's learning how to do proper branching. It's pull requests. It's having it's having. Uh, actions that plug in and that, that are triggered when a when a piece of code gets committed is it, it gets checked over to make sure it's all good and then it says fine you go here and you go here is the part where it ties into kubernetes or something like that because that process of pushing that software out is largely tied to something like kubernetes to do the deployment usually and so so devops as as the one big as a piece of this that is that is tied to the cloud but it's just one piece of it and you know all the infrastructure for devops is in you know cloud native but it at but in terms of like using the kubernetes cluster the devops cycle is like pushing stuff into the cloud and and using the cloud resources to do all of the checking and everything so that's so that's hopefully that gives you a lay of the land i know that's a pretty big uh bit of information to bite off but i gotta tell you up until this month i did i couldn't have told you the difference either it's very confusing <laughs> it's very confusing it's like okay well what piece goes where you know everything so think of that somebody asked the, the question about the languages and i think i already mentioned the uh, the languages of for all of this are uh if you want to do applications development it's go uh, if you want to do any of the orchestration and stuff, that's largely in Python still today. I think that's going to change over time. But Python is still the language people use to to orchestrate a lot of it. And uh, uh, and so those are languages to learn. If I I'd already told you that. Um, and if you if you want to play around with this stuff, uh, I'm just going to plug Beginner Boost beginning on May the fourth. Uh, we're kind of getting ready for that. May the 4th be with you, uh, rwx.gg slash uh, boost. And that might actually move to skillstack.io slash boost, but I don't know. Uh, please don't forget about security. Otherwise, DevOps uh, playing together could be a major pain. It really can. So one of the problems with all this containerization thing is that people are, containers by default run as root. And so people are not taking a moment to do basic things like don't run things as root and stuff. And so different topic. But I'm going to close up this video for now. Hopefully that gives you some sense of what's going on. And we'll 